This video is a bit of a saga because uh, there was a lot involved in getting this to this stage. So, I don't know, I think maybe it's uh, useful to a few of you because there's a bunch of different processes and getting this to this result, metalwork shrinking, filling, uh, spray filler, and then obviously the painting techniques. So I'm going to have to split it into two parts, at least two parts, because I've already done the first part and it's already like over for half an hour. So please enjoy. So having now painted the interior and the doors, the inside of the doors, I've got to paint the dash before I hang the doors, but I'm just going to get on and uh, start stripping this bonnet down. Got a bit of rust treatment to do on it. Probably use the uh, propane gas torch just see how it lifts first, but I think this is uh, acrylic paint on here, looking looking the way it's sort of crazed and gone gone like it has, dull like it has. So that might just go sticky. So we'll see whether or not the paint stripper or the gas, propane gas blowtorch is the best way to go on it. So it's just a very light bubbling of the paint there. And just lifting it off. So not really putting any heat Certainly not much heat into the panel. I actually still see the original etch primer. Not the original etch primer because it's been repainted, but the, the etch primer that's on there. It's warm, but it's not scalding hot. So anyway, we'll continue doing it this way. So just doing where the paint is thin here with paint stripper. Got some filler in here, the paint strip that off. But the, uh, the paint stripper itself has a real struggle with this hard old uh, filler. So it's just scrapes off nicely, it's very thin. Get through that in no time. For this stuff I'll just go over with the flame and warm that up to get that out. So the paint's off it now. It, uh, it feels okay. I'm going to take the filler out of this here now. The, it's too hard for the, the paint stripper to attack it. The side was filled as well. I'm not sure why both sides were filled. I can't see any sort of damage. This is a little bit wavy through here. And there's a bit of a there's a bit of a, a, a bump there. Feel that bump low there, high there. So I'll get the filler out of here and then I'm going to flip it over and get all the all the black and masticky, painty, horrible crap off there. Uh, and then I'll... that feels a bit funny there as well. And then I'll probably go over it with a file to try and find out 
where the high and low spots are and maybe get a maybe get a, a slapper or a spoon out and see if I can see it there see if I can uh, straighten it out might have to remove the reinforcing bars on the other side we'll see what's interesting here is that underneath the filler is this sort of I don't know, rust, oxidization, looks like stress cracking, it's really quite weird. It's almost where the, the filler is cracked and the moisture's got to the, the metal and it's just made these patterns. And this is why I say that you really shouldn't be putting filler down on bare metal. And this is uh, kind of rusty there. We've got a rust here, and this had a, I think it was filled in certain areas, and then a, an etch primer, a washing primer, put down on it, and then it seems to sort of fill a primer and then the final coat. It certainly wasn't the original paint. I've had the car for seven or eight years, it looked okay when I got the car, but uh, yeah, long overdue for a respray. Side B. So they've got this sort of, I don't know, rust protection on it. I'm not sure how it's going to come off. On the other parts of the car, I've used a wire brush on a drill attachment. So I might try that first. I'm not sure whether the Paint stripper will work. I'll, uh, I'll be letting you know shortly. Right, I've sort of got to say that the paint stripper is the way to go with this stuff. I don't know whether it's just crisp, crispy wax coating or. But anyway, that's the way to do it. Then we can do a second coat, a second layer. And get this original paint off. You see the original uh, metal is a good order under it. So it's done us a favour. But it ain't pretty enough for these days. So it's going. I tried it with a wire wheel. That's just going to be too much work. So paint stripper it is. The underside is now almost all stripped of the waxy black stuff and the uh, original paint. So a little bit more with a wire brush and a paint stripper through the ribs and the reinforcer there. It's in good solid order, there's no rust on it, which is really great. So the next step is to flip it back over and uh, probably run over it with uh, a body file and uh, check it for uh, high and low spots, dents and whatever. That's a body file. This is a homemade, maybe a slapper, but also a body file, as you can slap with it and file with it. So I'm going to use these two, try and, I don't know, like, work out what's going on with this bumper, that bonnet. Before I sand it all down, I'm just going to I don't know if you can see, it's high through there and low either side there. Sort of feeling as well. Make sure there's a tension on that. Make sure it's straight. This seems to be flat through here. There's definitely, and this is where filler was and where it's kind of rusty. Some issues 
So there we go with that high spot there, that's low, and then again with this here, that's high, and that's all low around there. Everything else seems to sort of just scratch up evenly. This is scratching up evenly. Doesn't seem to be highlighting any uh, any issues there. So I think out of the uh, out of the slapper and see what we can do with it. A couple of uh, spoons, slappers, whichever way. Same thing. Pumping spoons. I think these are actually sealy ones. Quite hard to find. So sealy in the UK have them. Uh, it's a bit high here. So I'm going to try and bring up the low spot. And then we'll see what the body file is like. I can't really feel that now. So you can see where this is high. Started off as quite a light high spot and it's spreading out now. But it's still low here and low here. So we'll keep working at it. And you can see the area now is getting flatter, getting larger. It's a little low here, low here, low here. This is all the same height. It's coming out. Chasing this out to this way now. You can feel that there. So I put a guy coat in there and gone over it with the uh, 80 grit Abri net. And now what you can see is this is all the normal height, and these are the, uh, the low spots. I should go to work on those now.
and that's proper real canned. Let's just see, there's a big bump there, it's gone now, there's one left there. Well, maybe a way of canning it will help it. Yeah, it's definitely low now, it was high. Certainly ain't low now, certainly shrunk. quite a bit but it's not up anymore finally that's the closest it's been Same shape as the other side is now. Just need to work a bit more. After uh, heat shrinking was up a big, big ball like that, big egg. It's now the same sort of level. But these are the high spots. So I'm going to work on those next. So it's uh, flattening out okay. Just a little bit high still. See the top there. If you can see it's very bright out here. Got a gap under there. A little bit high there. It's just that rocking on that point there. So, I'm just going to heat treat that little area there, just push it down very lightly. Not too much heat in it. I've been back and forth with this so many times now. I thought I'd almost got it yesterday. It was looking pretty flat. And I thought I'd give it one more go. And that one more go ended it, ended it pushing it out again. So I'll try again, shrink it back down with the heat. Just back on this bonnet, uh, I've been uh, up and down with this, this area here, having a real nightmare with it, getting it sort of relatively flat but kept stretching up in a balloon, kept kept bulging up. Tried great gashing, shrinking, and uh, ended up with massive distortion and low spot, and uh, and planished it flat again. But then it bobbled up again. So since the bubble, I've been using a TIG welder to uh, shrink it 
and it's actually come down quite well. It was seriously rocking. You know, we were looking three or four mil. Uh, there's a little bit there. There's low there. But I think it's maybe with that one done there.
seem to come out nicely than that. Well, I think it's probably the best I'm going to get now from what was considerably rough. Now I've got something with a few low spots. And if I push on there, it will can in. But with the reinforcer back in it, I think it'll be okay there, it just cans in then. But I think with that reinforcer back in place, we'll get, uh, we'll be okay with it. But I reckon that's, this is closed. There we go, canned again. Bastard. <laughs> I think that's good enough to fill, to be honest. Definitely the best I can achieve myself. Bang! There we go. So, do a bit of cleaning up with the, while the brace is out. Obviously from the factory, the braces never get any paint in them. So I'm going to just scrub out that surface rust there. I'm going to leave the original uh, I don't know what seam sealer stuff in there just to get the right height while I weld it and then what I might do is scrape it out and squirt some new stuff in there. I'd really like to take the whole brace off and do that but I think that's heading for trouble. So I'm just going to TIG weld that back in there and see my TIG welding is not fantastic. I'm new to it, so we'll try and take that weld in, that back in, take weld that back in. But yeah, as I say, I'm just going to clean that up first, get the uh, rust converter back on it, and I'll be back for updates soon. Right, so just finished sort of trying to make the best of a can from the repair, and now I've got to strip all the paint off, get the Rust converter on there because I do that with any bare metal. Uh, and I'm into all the nooks and crannies. So we've got a normal DA here, which you're using 80, 80 paper with. Uh, but obviously, you're limited with the size of that. And edges are an issue as well. But I just had a revelation that I have this mini DA. So a big DA and mini DA. Uh, unless you could just because it's got Velcro on it, you can just cut up your old discs and, uh, and whack them on there. 
So this is an, allowing me to get really nice. I'm sort of dreading it, getting the, losing my fingertips on the edges. So this just. Good stuff. Saving some time there. There's oil splatters now on the panel because obviously, I don't know, it's been. Uh, it says read the book, and the book says oil it. So I put a bit much in oil in there because it has actually been standing a very long time, this old tool. Uh, I acquired it. Shimano, made in Japan. I acquired it some time ago, I've never actually used it. Uh, as I say, I just thought that now was the time to give it a go. And uh, I think it's my new favourite tool. Right, that's the results of me sitting there and uh, sanding away with the uh, two DAs. So I've just asked what DA stand for. DA stands for dual action. So it's a dual action sander. I couldn't, uh, it's my son that asked me. I couldn't remember when he asked me. And he's just come back down again and I've remembered. So, uh, just going to clean this piece up here, clean the outside up, wire brush that off on the inside, treat it with a uh, rust converter and probably put a squirt of uh, 1k epoxy primer just up inside it. All of the rest of it is going to be in the same condition as that, I just can't bear to put you know, bare metal back in. Had a few busy days, so I've uh, not been back on this. But we're picking it up again. So I've got to weld in the uh, reinforcing rib. I should TIG weld it in. But before I do that, I'm going to kill the dog that's over there because it's crazy sod. Um, I'm going to paint under it. I know the rest of it doesn't have paint under it, but we can put some wax oil in or something. But I just want to put some paint in there and on the back side of the rib that's going to be welded in. Very simply, just grey on there. The next step will be just some red just to seal it. Looking very strange indeed, but uh, yeah. That's it, it's still wet. Well, the idea is now. Let's drop that in there. And weld it in place. I think I was going to tick this in, but uh, looking at the gaps, the gaps probably are a bit too much to expect from me and TIG. So I have a new to me welder which is uh, producing reasonable results. So I think I can do quite a tidy weld there. So I should use the MIG. Right, all well, that in there. The blue, a massive hole there. So I'll just plug that up. After a good grind, it uh, it'll look okay. Options. Options. Right, here's my two spare bonnets. I'm going to zoom that out then. There we go. The two spare bonnets. Neither of them are mint. That's got some funny business on the corner there. This one's got a load of goo stuffed up the reinforcer. Which I don't know what that really means, other than there's goo stuffed up it. 
that edge is a little bit uh, ripply in line with the damage on that corner. There's a big scratch across it in a dent. This one is possibly a little more honest. Spent a lot of time messing around with the uh, one off the car. But I guess a few hours more messing around with one of these ain't gonna hurt us. So a case of eeny meeny and I'm gonna go for the red one. Get it paint stripped. <laughs> 